So, we've all seen Wonder Woman by now, right? I really like it, and I wanted to do this quick little sort of mini video essay to talk about one aspect of it. The color. And yes, I know it's me talking about color in superhero movies again, but as positively as Wonder Woman has been received, I have seen a lot of people talking about it as having the same dull, muted look as the other DC movies, which I think is inaccurate. See, this movie uses color better and more deliberately than not just the other DC movies, but than any other superhero movie in years. So let's talk about that. As I've said before, I think the Zack Snyder DC movies objectively look good, since he's a brilliant visual stylist. But for movies about Superman, a character who's supposed to represent hope, I think the desaturated, somber color palette is a poor choice. But that's Snyder's aesthetic, and it's going to be applied to any movie he makes. Suicide Squad, I think, actually has good cinematography, and bathing the visuals in sickly yellowish hues works well for a movie about supervillains. But let's look at what Wonder Woman does. And the spoilers are going to be very light here. So, like, spoiler alert, she is alive at the end of the movie. The whole first act is set on Themyscira, and the colors there are richer and more vibrant than anything we've seen in the other DC films. It's full of warm skin tones, deep blues of the ocean and sky, and lush green everywhere. It's beautiful and full of color. Then she accompanies Steve Trevor to England and encounters Man's World for the first time, and the whole look changes. Everything is bleak and gray and shown in cold, bluish hues. And immediately upon arriving, Diana remarks, It's hideous. So now we're seeing a look similar to the Snyder movies, except this time it's motivated, providing a sharp contrast between the Amazonian paradise and the shitty world men have made. In an interview last week with Elvis Mitchell on The Treatment, Here's what director Patty Jenkins had to say about the color. In the opening, it's all color, right? It's every color, and that is life, and that is beauty, and if we were living a balanced life, and that was always what I loved about the mascara. And so I loved that about that world. And then what was interesting is when we got into uh, Man's World, I didn't want there to be an overwhelming array of color. Man's World is much more limited, controlled, it's, it's within a smaller pocket, so there's actually a lot of color, but the color is only blue, gray, not green. But it gets more interesting when we get to the already iconic No Man's Land scene. This is the classic moment in any superhero origin movie where the hero makes their public debut, making the choice to step forward and help people. All of No Man's Land is portrayed as bleak and miserable and cold. Even the clothes the men wear are drab, blending into the environment. So look at Diana as she steps out onto the battlefield. Her skin tones are warm, the red of her costume is vibrant, she's a beacon of hope and warmth, standing out against the cold misery of this wasteland. Compare this to her visual presentation in Batman v Superman, where all the colors were so muted that you couldn't even tell her costume was red. Everything is just a bunch of brown. Now this continues through the action sequence, especially as she takes out the Lasso of Truth, which provides this bright beam of light cutting through the darkness. And after this battle ends, and the town has been saved, the color palette changes. It's now shown in warm yellows and oranges. Diana has literally restored light to the town. Okay, I'm jumping back in here because there's no available footage to use for reference for this next part. So in the next scene, set the following morning, we now see the town bathed in this warm sunlight. And the same idea with the color shows up in the final scene of the movie, set in the present day, where we see Wonder Woman looking out over Paris, which is lit up by this bright golden sunset. The colors here, compared to the blues that had previously covered the landscape, are telling us that Diana's presence has brought hope and warmth to the world, and there really was a brighter tomorrow. Look, this is not especially complicated, but it's effective. Patty Jenkins is using color as a storytelling device, which is something I wish I would see in more comic book movies. So don't complain that it's another drab DC movie when all the colors are thematically motivated. And as for the movie itself, because people keep asking me, I really liked it, and I'm so happy to report that it accomplished the main thing I was hoping for. It gave us a hero with clear motivations and goals, who learned and made discoveries and grew and had a clear arc over the course of the movie. Of all the things the movie did well, the most important was getting Diana right. And now, I am excited to see more movies about her. By the way, this week's regular video will be coming in a couple days. If you want to help us make more of these things, check out the Patreon. If you want to get updates on what we're working on and yell at you about stuff, check out the social media links, and I will see you on Wednesday. Probably.